How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood transgender medical student. And today we're going to be talking about the fact that the FDA just approved within the last week, the first ever injectable HIV medication. So a lot of you who don't know a lot about how HIV is treated might be thinking, why would having an injectable form of an HIV medication even beneficial to the patient? Well, it turns out that most HIV medications are oral and you have to take it every day. However, if you don't take it every day, you forget here and there. And unfortunately, a lot of patients have a really hard time taking medications every single day orally or even may have trouble swallowing pills, might accidentally forget, might not take their medications like they're supposed to. And if they don't take their HIV medication every day, they might develop resistance. Their HIV will learn to adapt to combat the drugs that they're taking. So that can become very dangerous for both the patient and for anyone the patient is having unprotected sex with because they might also contract the patient's HIV that's resistant to certain drugs. I mean, even when I look at myself, it. I also have a very hard time adhering to the medications I should be taking. I take a bunch of supplements, which I'm supposed to be taking every day, but sometimes I just forget, sometimes I'm lazy. So I know HIV is a very serious condition, but we also have to understand the human condition. Humans sometimes have a hard time adhering to a regimen, and sometimes we forget, and as we get older, we get we forget more and more. So the benefits of an injectable form of a drug is that you only have to inject once for a long amount of time before you have to inject it again. With this specific drug, carbotegravir, also known as brand name Apritude, you inject it twice. The first two injections are once every month and after that, injections are every two months. So you don't have to worry about taking pills every day. You don't have to worry about forgetting your pills if you're going on a trip. You don't have to forget about accidentally flushing your pills down the toilet and not having your pills available to you. You go to, into the office with your doctor, you get the injections, the first two months is one month apart, and then afterwards you come in every two months and get that injection and then you're good to go. I also wanna emphasize that, that this drug is not for the treatment of someone who already has HIV. This is a pre-exposure prophylaxis drug, also known as PrEP. It's a type of drug you take as someone who is worried about maybe one day contracting HIV from a partner, or you just wanna protect yourself overall with whoever you're having sex with and you don't wanna contract HIV, you will take this drug so in case you ever encounter someone who does have HIV and either the condom breaks or something happens where you get in touch in contact with bodily fluids, you'll be protected by this drug. In order to be qualified to have this drug is that you must be HIV negative. So when you go into the office and ask for this drug, the doctor will test you and make sure you are in fact HIV negative before they prescribe it to you. Because if you are HIV positive and you take this drug by itself, you can develop resistance to other HIV medications, which is a big, big no-no. So you have to be HIV negative and you have to be at least 77 pounds. Luckily, most adults in the, in, in the United States are more than 77 pounds. And you, there are basically no other contraindications other than you've had a previous allergy to carbotegravir because there's an oral version of it or that you have a bad reaction to it after your first injection. As far as how the injection is administered, you go into the office, the doctor does a single intramuscular injection into your back buttock area and you're good to go. It shouldn't be very painful. Some of the reactions and side effects some people have had while undergoing the clinical trials for this drug are pain at the injection site, which is normal. I mean, I do my T-shots. Sometimes then you might have a little bit of bruising, also common with other forms of injections like my T-shots. And some people might have a little bit of an allergic reaction, such as itching, a little bit of hypersensitivity. But other than that, no other major side effects. Some people have had rare instances of body aches and muscle aches, but it's rare. As far as its effectiveness, it's actually a very, very effective pre-exposure prophylaxis drug. They did two specific clini clinical, they did two specific clinical trials for this drug. The first one showed that it is 69% more effective than taking oral Truvada. Truvada is another prep drug that people take orally. And in the second trial, it showed that Patients who took the intramuscular carbotegravir showed a 90%, 90% less risk of getting HIV compared to participants who took Truvada. So very, very effective drug and not a lot of 
things you have to do with it. But lastly, I want to address the big elephant in the room since it's just been approved by the FDA. It's gonna take a while for insurance to start accepting this drug and also for federal programs like Ryan White Clinics to start accepting it. It's gonna take at least a couple of months for it to get approved, to get grant funding, for this to be available and available and accessible to everyone. But right now, this drug is incredibly expensive. Without insurance, if you're gonna pay out of pocket for it, it is priced at $3,700 per dose. Absolutely insane. I mean, this goes for other PrEP drugs as well. If you don't have insurance, and if you're not going to a federally funded Ryan White HIV treatment facility, PrEP drugs are incredibly expensive. So overall, do I think this is going to minimize the problems that we have when it comes to poor people's access to HIV medications, when it comes to trans people having access to HIV medications, when it comes to black people having access to HIV medications? Absolutely not. This will not fix that problem. At least it will open a small doorway for some people to have access to it. It will open a small doorway for people who have a hard time taking drugs regularly so that they can only have to really just show up once or twice a month or every two months for this to work. Yes, it will open some doors, but will it solve the HIV pandemic crisis that we are in right now? Absolutely not. Not unless this drug becomes accessible to everyone. Anyways, I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you gained something from this video. I hope that you will share it with someone that might also find this information useful. Please follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and the shenanigans I go into as a trans medical student in the United States healthcare system. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Mwah. This is Ben.